morning. Welcome to Viewpoint, your program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. Uh, this morning, we have uh, personalities and perspectives. And thank God we can drop the politicians into the lake for a while uh, until tonight's TV. God well, knows what will come on. They, they, can't, they couldn't be with us today. They're so busy fighting, they just couldn't <laughs> fit in another thing. Well, we did invite the Donald. But uh, he opted, uh, he said he had to appear in Burton View for an outing next week and he'll come in and talk to us next Wednesday. And uh, this is not April Fool. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we uh, have a couple of really great guests this morning, people from whom I'm very, very fond and, and uh, are doing a great job in our community. And I'm going to let Judith Kay uh, introduce them at the appropriate time. Uh, Doctor and Mrs. Garlic, one of the things we do at, on Viewpoint is uh, come up with a kudo or two. Uh, people or organizations who have done something in the community that are uh, what, uh, important. Uh, and it's go I'm going to let you do the kudo on the lamps uh, oh, concert. Well, because you're your own 50% of the show. And so, <laughs> so <laughs> well, <laughs> it was just wonderful. It always is. The Lincoln Area Music Society. And they had their program at the, uh, at the high school. And it was it was so well done. I don't know Tim Searby and Julie Kesa are just a miracle. They are, and those people work so hard and put on this lovely program for the town. And it's it, just watch for it. Uh, they have two a year, mm -hmm. and. Um, they're so worthwhile. You, you're really missing something if you don't take advantage of that. That's all I have to say. Well, I think that's quite a bit. We'll cut you off at that <laughs> point in time. Uh, seriously, uh, those folks, uh, they, they put in you know, uh, the, the orchestra. I thought they were outstanding. And uh, Mr. Biggs, Devin Biggs, told me that uh, they only had two rehearsals. Oh, and uh, it sounded really, really great. And the uh, the choral group that Tim puts together, uh, you'd think they were uh, a lot bigger than they really are. But there's a number of people who give a lot of hours. So kudos, thank you for them. Uh, in light of the fact that we have the president of Lincoln College with us this morning and, and the first lady of Lincoln College, it'd be appropriate to mention that our, our volleyball team, doctor, uh, first place in what was known as the Silver Division, in the National Collegiate Volleyball Federation. Uh, they played some big time teams. Uh, it wasn't like Mount Pulaski and Elkhart and Burton View. Uh, they played <laughs> Brandeis University. Uh, they played several other big West, schools. West Point. West Point, I noted that, yeah. So, uh, first place. Uh, oh and the, the significance of that, that this is only the second year of men's volleyball on that campus. And, and more importantly, or as importantly, not more, but as importantly, the coach, Mark Tippett, was named Coach of the Year by the organization. So that's a big, that's tall cotton. That's a very big deal. Congratulations to them. Uh, it's, it's not shocking to hear this because there's a history of fine teams in all sports at Lincoln College. Yeah, one of those sports that uh, doesn't get a whole lot of, of ink, as they say in the trade. Notice I said that. Yeah, I like know. I knew what I was talking about. I was impressed. I didn't know what trade you were in. <laughs> <laughs> Machinist Union? Uh, and I'm not going to tell either. Uh, uh, <laughs> the swim team. Uh, not a lot of uh, notoriety about them. But they worked just as hard in that, in that activity. As they went to the Nationals And they've gone to see. That That's is. a big deal. Uh, one final thing. Yes. And I, at the last minute, passed the information to you. Jolette Ransom, uh, the uh, first lady of Elkhart, almost. Yes. Well, she says so, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> anyway, she got, sent me an email about the Elkhart Flower Walk up on Elkhart Hill. Yeah. And I think, uh, without all this foolishness about it and facetiousness, um, that's a nice thing in the community. So go ahead and talk to us a little bit about that. I'm just going to read the whole little missile here because I think it's kind of cute. All right. Okay. You may read that. Dear Mr. Bill, <laughs> hope you're doing wonderfully this beautiful day. Can you give a little gossip coat? spin, quote unquote, to the attached announcement of the Spring Wildflower finale, finale 430, which has not, that's the date, not at time. Are you with me? We're following. Okay, okay. Which has not received any press yet. 
the release goes out tomorrow. That must be today. <laughs> that would be today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that being said, the next two Saturdays, 416 and 423, should be excellent for wildflower viewing. Barring anything unforeseen, parenthetically she says snow, wind, and other four-letter words. <laughs> uh, Interested should go to the Elkhart Historical Society dot org website for information and reservations or call two one seven eight nine nine two two three eight. The Elkhart Historical Society appreciates all that you do for everyone as well as us. Now that's a nice note to you. That should have made your day. Well, the point of it is uh, uh, Lisa and Dr. Gerlock. Uh, Elkhart Hill is steeped in in history here. I mean, just uh, I call Elkhart uh, uh, Hickeyville because of our illustrious uh, historical student uh, and college uh, board member for many years, Jim Hickey. Mm -hmm. uh, State historian, by the way. Oh uh, yes, big time. I mean, the young man. Really. Anyway. Uh, like Atlanta here to our right, uh, to the north of us, uh, Elkhart's another one of our small communities that, that they just coalesce and, and got together and put these things on in the community and do a great job. So uh, that's uh, if you may have to take your fur coat because uh, we haven't had anything but cold weather yet. But uh, wildflower walk. Now let's get serious. Yeah, I, I think we should. Um, we're happy to have with us today another neighbor. We all live within a block of each other. Um, Dr. Dave Gerlach is the new president at Lincoln College, and we welcome him to our community along with his lovely wife, Lisa. And uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to visit with you on the way up here, and I look forward to seeing you lots more. Lisa tells me, I hope she speaks for the both of you, that they love it here. Absolutely, and, and we have had such a wonderful welcome by the community. And uh, this is, you, you talked, Bill, earlier about your fur coat. And I, I just dare say the individuals here in, in central Illinois, I, I'm not sure the word cold has yet to reach our lips. I mean, this is chilly, maybe. <laughs> Even in the heart of winter, it, it might have been 40 degrees colder on the coldest day here or where we came from. So mm -hmm. we're very we're very excited about this summer that we have going on right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> but we crank up some extra winds in the oh, spring. Yeah. Well, hold your, hold your judgment on that. Lisa and I were discussing the fact that three out of the five of us in this room no cold. We practiced in Minnesota and you practiced in upstate New York. That's correct. And uh, we didn't practice heat. When we first moved here, I was very taken aback <laughs> by what happens. People kept saying this winter, and every winter, oh, I can hardly wait till it warms up. Well, rest assured, <laughs> it'll come. Last summer we experienced a little bit of it. So we, we have now officially been here. This is tomorrow is the start of my 11th month. So June 15th was my first work day, and uh, it has been, uh, we, we dealt with the heat in the summer a little bit. Now, I don't know if before that would have been warmer, but the, the lightning bugs, yeah. the uh, cicadas. cicadas were <laughs> yes. a shock to us. Mm -hmm. That was a bit different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, th I kind of thought maybe Amarin had hired these beasts <laughs> <laughs> to make that noise. I'm not sure, though. It's impressive. It is. And today is the anniversary of your first grandchild's 15-month birthday. That's correct. Yes. 15 months old today. And he's back in upstate New York. Actually, he's in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> they live in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Cass lived in Pennsylvania for a while. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. But I'm, I know how you miss him because my first grandchild was in Minneapolis. And, boy, I tell you, it's almost physical you miss him so much sure yeah but he's learned to see grandma on the 
screen Scriping. of the computer. Yes. And he'll lean his little head into the screen to get a little kiss from Grandma. So <laughs> oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, well, fun. 11 months ago, a new sheriff rode into town, stepped off that white horse, and uh, found that uh, in the sheriff's office he had some pretty good, doggone good deputies on, uh, uh, on site. And the uh, doctor has uh, proceeded with alacrity to move into this thing and, and kind of refocus where we were going with Lincoln College. Uh, let's just kind of briefly talk about that and, and some of your long-term goals, Dr. Goals, Dr. Gerlach. Certainly. The, uh, what a beautiful campus. And yeah. I, I couldn't have been more pleased with the condition, the facilities, the academic program the uh, faculty um, just a beautiful beautiful campus athletic facilities and and many of your audience members certainly Bill you would know from your family history and the esteemed alumni connections the college for the first 65 years from 1865 to 1929 we were a bachelor and master grant in college mm -hmm. 1929 because of the depression we dropped <clears throat> back to being a two-year college and had a phenomenal path of that till about I'm gonna say six or so years ago mm -hmm. we started offering a jazz and theater majors uh, on the Lincoln campus we offered about seven we offer about seven baccalaureate degrees up at the normal campus mm -hmm. But as I arrived, as I interviewed with the trustees, I uh, thought it was interesting. We had seven up at Normal, two at Lincoln, mm -hmm. and and the campus really hadn't experienced much growth in, in a while. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, how about we bring those baccalaureate degrees down from Normal? They said, you're hired, and that's what, <laughs> we, uh, that's what we've been doing. So in the spring, we started our criminal justice for your degree on the campus. We had a goal of eight students. We ended up with seven plus 19 were sitting in the junior level class. This fall, we start a business administration degree. We're bringing that down from the normal campus. And a sport management four-year degree. La uh, two weeks ago, we had the Higher Learning Commission on campus. And near and dear to, to your illustrious radio station here, we are uh, proposing a TV, radio, new media four-year degree. And they read us their letter of support, and it, we hit the ball out of the park. We think next month the Higher Learning Commission will approve that degree, and we already have pent-up demand of students who have been working in our radio program ready to go. So over the next three years, we'll add uh, uh, three more degrees next year, three the year after. That'll give us 12 baccalaureate degrees. Probably at that time, we'll launch a master degree that we have ready to go now um, maybe a few more after that down the road I could foresee a doctorate or two my goodness we will move from the National Junior Athletic Association to either the NAIA or the NCAA somewhere in the six to eight years out from now we will double in size in these 12 years of this expansion plan and uh, We'll have to add additional facilities. That's why right now, very uh, excited about our university hall renovations. The first building on the campus was University Hall in 1865. I find it uh, uh, intriguing to me to think back, what was it like mm -hmm. to get the limestone and bricks to that site? Mm -hmm. uh, our history book actually talked about it being a hill. Mm -hmm. and I. I'm from upstate New York. I know hills. <laughs> you mentioned Elkhart. Mm -hmm. I, I know hills. And, but anyway, the bricks would have come by wagon, and uh, I couldn't imagine building that building up on the scaffolding uh, back in 1865. But that building will go through a major renovation, and uh, we may talk about it later, but we received a wonderful gift uh, recently announced about that will go in to support the renovation of that building. So exciting plan. I can tell you our students 
are thrilled about being able to stay right at Lincoln to complete their four-year degree. Oh, so yeah. exciting times. You know, well, now go ahead, with Judith. all those plans, is that going to uh, have to bring about a building program? Well, I I think initially we have enough space probably for this fall. Um, heading into next year will be a different story, and we'll have to. Uh, uh, make further plans in relation to housing for okay. students. Mm -hmm. I think we have enough uh, classroom space. The goal of getting University Hall back online is to open up additional classroom uh, opportunities. I can tell you, in fact, I have some secret charts here that I was just bringing back to work this morning. Uh -huh. uh, our admissions numbers are busting through the roof. Our applications are up 80 uh, percent at this point. We have more applications today than we had last year at the end of the recruiting season, the year before, and the year before that at the end of the recruiting season. My so gracious. the marketing that we've done has created a bit of a buzz and, and students are excited about having a opportunity of a small private liberal arts college experience right here in central Illinois. Before I get to Mrs. Gerlach, and she's a very, very important part of this combination we brought to Lincoln, Illinois, uh, you alluded to our, our enrollment and, and how that's moving up, which is a great news for all of us. Uh, the other evening at the concert, you, we had one of our uh, young folks who's out in the Hastings doing our recruiting for us. The young lady uh, uh, is working the, the mines up in the Chicago area. Yep. And the reason I bring that up is that Jean asked her about her how she felt she was doing. And she said she, her quota was 25, but she thought she was going to make 30, which was you know an automatic positive response. And she's very enthused yep. about what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Benita uh, is the admissions counselor that you were referencing. We, we had the pleasure of sitting with the two of you at the Disney Review, which was wonderful, written by one of our own students. Yeah, well done. Yeah, it was, really well done. It was man. enjoyable, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, I really thought the the students did a great job. Uh, but Benita is an energetic, and and if you meet other admissions individuals. The good ones are all like Benita, and they just have a lot of energy and and ability to connect with. Uh, <laughs> we just had a cat scare me here. I thought I was getting attacked by uh, a beast here. <laughs> this uh, the cat Be comes calm. and goes. As the cat, this please. This is not an attack. No, cat. this is not an <laughs> no, attack. This cat. is a pretty lazy cat. Oh, okay. Well, Madam First Lady, uh, coming from uh, uh, upstate New York. This had to be uh, somewhat of a uh, geographic, if not a cultural shock. Um, <laughs> entirely different area. Uh, and of course, uh, the college president's uh, wife is kind of out there on the end of the stick in the limelight. Uh, not necessarily the way that she'd like to be in a lot of times. But uh, tell us about your reactions. And you, you've been with us now uh, 11 months. and. Uh, very well received, I might say. <laughs> yes, uh, I can very see well why. Received. Very, very well. Uh, so, what have your reactions been? Well, like Dave said, we've been here going on now 11 months, and uh, the impression is the people. Uh, people from this area are so welcoming and so friendly. Um, arms wide open. Everyone has been so gracious to both of us and very welcoming. Um, it was a big uh, transition mostly because of family. Uh, everyone is back east, but mm -hmm. We knew that was going to be part of this um, when Dave was working on his doctorate and his goal was to be a college president someday. So my family and everyone was prepared for this opportunity uh, that would someday occur. So. Um, and it was perfect timing. Our, it was perfect. Our children were just leaving yeah. the house and our one had yeah. been working and the other finished her master's degree. and. Yeah. So, so that's got to make you feel good. Yes, as a mama, that was a good thing, mm -hmm. that they yes. were all settled, they they were doing great. So we were ready 
to take on an adventure. I should report also that uh, Mrs. Garlock is a registered nurse with a degreed registered nurse so uh, uh, if things don't go well Dave she can always go to work at the hospital <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well you know you, you never know Bill you always have to keep your skills up and right. I, I started in college as a dish boy mm -hmm. and if I have to go back to that you know you if, can do it. if my bosses the trustees uh, struggle well I'm sure there's some dishwashing to be done somewhere oh yes <laughs> the college campus if nowhere else <laughs> well, uh, have there been any surprises, Lisa, uh, in, as regards coming into what we're doing here in Logan County? And we do have a, a great number of citizens who are really deeply involved in what's going on in the thread of the, count, uh, the county, and it certainly has got to be advantageous. Yes, I'm, I've been uh, just watching for the last few months, trying to adjust and, and uh, this whole new life we're in. Uh, both for the college and the community. Um, so I think that for me personally, I've just been kind of waiting to see what might be my opportunities to serve the community um, and the college. College is expected, you know, that's my role and I mm -hmm. love it. The mm -hmm. people on the campus are great. Um, so now I'm, I finally did get my license transferred as a nurse from New York to Illinois. It took, took a little, little time, while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the wheels now, of government. The wheels yeah. of government, exactly. I told someone, well, I know they cashed my check. I just haven't gotten the license yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the license did come through. So now I feel, now that we've been here, I've been here uh, enough to kind of see what op the opportunities are for me personally. And you've gotten involved in church. You're yeah. doing some nursing there. Yeah, yeah. We have a health office in our church, and I've been going there and helping folks out with blood pressures and advice mm -hmm. and uh, counseling there. Um, you had so quite an experience last night. My first Zanta, I was invited to Zanta. Oh, how so nice. That was the nice. wonderful ladies, and mm -hmm. we were able to go to the museum and Lincoln, Lincoln Museum Lincoln on the Heritage campus. Museum, and yes. You saw something that I have yet to experience and uh, why don't you share about that, the, the flag. They, uh, the museum was kind enough to uh, put out the flag that the women from Middletown made Isn't that interesting? for Lincoln um, and they had it all out for us to view it's a large flag, isn't it? It's very large, yeah. Um, what was very moving, though, were, was when they were done presenting, the ladies of Santa said the Pledge of Allegiance to that flag. Oh. And there were some tears in the room. So it was, it was a wonderful night. And the flag was donated to the museum, and we're uh, in the silent side of getting that flag uh, both restored and uh, framed appropriately to preserve it mm -hmm. and have it put up. And I, and I think you said uh, we're going to need about $50,000 to... Oh, I don't... I don't oh, I thought... Yeah. Well, I, between twenty and fifty. So, mm -hmm. Bill, if you wanted to write a $50,000 check, I might be able to give you some change. <laughs> I'll talk to my chancellor of the exchequer in my house about that. <laughs> You know, you mentioned a possible tear or two at this ceremony. My mother was fiercely proud of being a member of the Daughters of the American Resolution, mm -hmm. Revolution. And uh, uh, I'm downsizing now, looking through things and so forth, and giving things away to my children. And I came across the, the uh, a beautifully hand-drawn, laboriously hand-drawn uh, chart of our genealogy, which goes clear back into England. Wow. And somebody in uh, 1919 or so, or a great uncle or whomever, did this, and it's it's real. It's a real piece of art. Uh, so, uh, and my mother was very very proud of the fact that uh, she's a DAR. That's and that great. Was, yeah. Uh, now, with reference to uh, uh, University Hall, Doctor. Uh, the bequest, oh, I better for check it. It went around to get to the commercials just a little bit, Mr. Ash. I have to take care of that, you know, or we won't be on the air. Uh, <laughs> what preference is this nice bequest that Mr. Carroll gave us? Uh, that will give you the wherewithal 
to uh, start immediately to do what, doctor? Well, phase one of this project will essentially help us get that building back online. It's uh, the 150-year-old stairs heading off of the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, let's just say they are slightly worn a bit. No kidding. A little bit. <laughs> tiny bit, anyway. My and father helped wear those down in 1919. I think your father may... I, I wonder if we could still charge the Gossett family for wear and tear. <laughs> Depreciation on <laughs> <of> the steps. <laughs> um, so getting the stairs stable, I'm told that in some... when the building was in use in the winter, students would do a little slip and slide coming down the stairs mm -hmm. with what shoes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's some narrow parts as they curve up mm -hmm. and uh, so renovate the stairs uh, we're going to take some of the reinvestment money that the trustees have made available along with the parts of this bequest that are coming in to uh, to begin work on the stairs and and preparation because we'll need that classroom space we feel next next fall and phase one uh, which the money we have in hand today won't cover phase one mm -hmm. uh, will ultimately get us an elevator on the inside of that building so it will keep the beauty of that 150 year old building from the from the outside it'll take a little bit of space on the inside that elevator will enable that building to be handicap accessible mm -hmm. and meet the current codes and, and guidelines. Um, but, but freshen up some of the classrooms upstairs. You know, when you go up in that building, I, I did it last summer when I first came, you can feel the ghosts of the students past. There are names up in that cupola <laughs> from 1883 or 78 or something like that and and you can I can envision students sitting on the floor studying between classes and stressing over midterms and so I'm I'm excited about the possibilities of getting started on that and those students were dressed to the nines I'm sure I imagine yeah well we've changed that a little bit, <laughs> a little uh, bit. we did away with it <laughs> we've changed the format of this morning because usually we try to get our commercials in a little earlier and I noticed mr. ash kind of dancing on the file over there wondering how we're going to do this so uh, when he's ready go right ahead James and here we are live in the studios the program's viewpoint your program of personalities politicians and perspectives and once again Mrs. Budby you and I are uh, remiss we never seem to remember to, to talk about our phone number 648-5510 there might be somebody out there one or two of you anyway who would like to talk with uh, Dr. Gerlach or uh, the first lady of the campus, uh, Mrs. Gerlach? Basically, uh, thank you for giving us your time this morning to come up. You're welcome. We appreciate it. I just thought it might be nice if we'd have the first lady up here and, and uh, get a little uh, bit of the flavor of uh, what the wife has to think about us here in Lincoln, Golden County. Uh, we have, uh, we're on the cusp of breaking news here. Breaking news. And uh, I'll let. Dr. Gerlach, uh, break this news. Uh, stand by for uh, the, Mr. and Mrs. American and all the ships at sea. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Walter Winchell? Can we get a little music? No. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Jim well, can arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're very excited, and I don't think we've uh, finished up the press release, but this is such an esteemed uh, radio station. I'm sure being listened to by hundreds of thousands of, of uh, individuals in, in the community. Or two or three. Well, maybe. <laughs> well, we're, we are excited, and, and, and please don't tell anybody. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, Button up, folks. But we have a wonderful actor, well-renowned individual who played uh, Abraham Lincoln on a TV series in the 70s, Hal Holbrook is coming for our commencement speaker and will uh, receive an honorary doctorate uh, degree coming up and we're very excited about that and and uh, Lisa and I are a little beside ourselves we're actually gonna have dinner yes. with Hal at the at the president's house and 
And well, that'll be uh, a little touch of, of fame, and it'll be interesting to hear his stories. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well esteemed actor, and mm -hmm. and even some of our young people might have seen him on uh, uh, Sons of Anarchy, uh, a modern show. I guess he played a <coughs> character there, and and uh, he was in the Le new Lincoln Spielberg Lincoln movie as a senator, mm -hmm. and. Uh, well known for his um, one man stage oh, yes. show on Mark Twain. Mm -hmm. Yes, outstanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's really big news. That's big news. As we say here in the South, that's tall cotton. Tall cotton. <laughs> <laughs> the south of Chicago, that yeah. is. Uh, so, uh, that's going to be some awfully good PR nationally for us. I think so. To have a gentleman of that stature uh, receive an honorary degree from Lincoln College. So, uh, hats off to... Uh, well, having our, our uh, you know, the governing body of Lincoln College has been in operation since 1865. And uh, Judge Stringer, Colonel Latham were trustees of Lincoln College, but uh, independently operating for 150 years. And Hal is a uh, worked with one of our trustees mm -hmm. back on that 70s TV show, and and those connections that our trustees bring uh, to the college are invaluable mm -hmm. and uh, just absolutely wonderful. As a former trustee yourself, you you're well aware of the importance of that role. Yes. Uh they have an integral part. By the way, you might just, for the edification of those listening, as you say, Judith, maybe both of them, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us uh, how the college works from a, from a hierarchy standpoint, from a management standpoint. Well, uh, as long as I, as president, keep uh, three individuals happy. <laughs> Lisa, there you go. <laughs> the board of trustees and you, Bill. I mean, I think that's that's my uh, that's my assignment. Well, uh, one out of three is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, as president, I report to this uh, um, self-replacing board of trustees that has been in operation for 150 years. I'm the 22nd president, and and had the honor of following John Blackburn, who uh, was a trustee and stepped in as president, did a wonderful job. He sure did that. And, and under me, I have a cabinet of vice presidents, and, uh, and I really report to my assistant, uh, Amy Gallagher. And when I showed up, Amy said to me, she said, you know, Dr. Gerlach, you know what they call me? And I said, what do they call you, Amy? She said, the widow maker, because she's had a handful of presidents over the last 10 years. <laughs> yes. And I said, well, I'm hoping I can survive uh, uh, the stint. But then we have department chairs and faculty and, and uh, individuals who run the campus, uh, maintenance and food service, things like that. Just and a couple of items right there, Doctor. Sure. Uh, maintenance. An outstanding staff. Absolutely. Just they really do a good job. And the food service. Oh. Outstanding. Yeah. I remember a few years ago when the grandson Jerry was going there, and, and uh, uh, I asked him how the food was, and I knew it was pretty doggone good then. And he saw it's okay. <laughs> well, he went away to Western, yeah. and, and he found out we're serving very good food here. <laughs> That's what Warren Wentland had told me. I said, do the kids appreciate this dining hall? And he said, not so much, but then when they go on, I hear from them and they say, boy, I didn't appreciate that enough. Right, exactly. and, and, and students complain, I think for the last 500 years, complain about the food and sure. the residence hall conditions and they don't know how good they have it. Lisa, why don't you uh, share uh, our head of the facilities and grounds you've come, become close with and mm -hmm. just share some of your impressions of of uh, the college facilities and your relationship with with Rhonda. Yeah, Rhonda <laughs> Paya is the head of the buildings and grounds and you know having living in a college facility at the president's house um, she's just been so wonderful to work with. Um, 
and whenever I need anything over there, you know, because I, I pretty much am kind of a team player in that, you know, we want the facility, the, how, the president's house to be where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And whenever there's an issue, I just call and they're there. Um, and the, the people on buildings and grounds, I can't ask for better people. They are wonderful people. Um, Your daffodils are lovely, by Aren't the way. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. Aren't they beautiful? So everyone is just, they're just great. Um, you, you don't dare say anything bad about Rhonda Pyatt in my wife's presence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's wonderful. She, she thinks the world of her. Mm -hmm. She'd worked a lot with her you know, as on the, down through the years on the soiree. Oh, and, absolutely. And, uh, which is, uh, by the way, that's a... Uh, uh, that's kind of a the big fundraiser for the year, uh, always in the fall of the year. Uh, fancy dancy affair. People dress up pretty nicely, which is a nice thing. Adds a little luster to the uh, campus and uh, brings out dresses that people haven't had on anything but on the hangers for the last 11 months. <laughs> so uh, that's a very nice uh, affair. Fundraiser, very important fundraiser for the Lincoln Heritage Museum. We've kind of uh, glossed over the museum, Doctor and, and uh, Mrs. Gerlach. Uh, that, like our president and first lady, is relatively new on our campus. Uh, it's a gem. And uh, I would urge folks to find time uh, during this. Now we're getting into the warm weather, nice to get out a little bit. Uh, find time to go over there and visit this museum. The second floor is kind of a, a spellbinder for you. Uh, go upstairs and you start uh, with Lincoln's assassination and move from room to room. Uh, a self-conducted tour, uh, a live tour in that you're suggested to, to touch certain things and when you touch them, uh, something else comes alive in that, in that particular room. Uh, going through Lincoln's life and then down to uh, uh, from, his, from his death back going all the way back and then at the end while well, we have the train cars and all of that mm -hmm. uh, it's exciting uh, I, I found out this week I didn't realize this that we are the oldest Lincoln Museum in Illinois I don't think no I was kidding. aware of that and, no. and uh, <coughs> the collection started and it donated to us in 1946 by Judge Stringer who was a trustee in the mm -hmm. 1800s for the college and uh, the museum is wonderful. Under the leadership of Tom McLaughlin, uh, mm -hmm. just started uh, this past fall. And uh, it is a wonderful asset. 90 minutes is really all you need. Get a little taste of the museum. And then I would also say, um, if you're interested in attending the soiree, last year we had 240 some people come mm -hmm. to that event. Uh, all of the proceeds go to support the museum with silent auction and a, a public auction and dancing and and all manner of fanciness. Um, it was very enjoyable. We were a little worried. First time I donned a tux in a long time and uh, black tie optional so everybody looks fantastic. We raised over $44,000 for the museum. That's a good piece of change. And and we have... Uh, and had fun doing it. We, it. You talked about politics early on. We have a wonderful new display at the museum called The Nation's Choice. So if, yes. if your audience listeners aren't so excited about the choices they may have now, come and see The Nation's Choices back in 18... 60. 60. In 1860, when Abraham Lincoln got elected. Mm -hmm. I, I have <laughs> another question of history for you. Uh, when the college began, there was an affiliation with the Presbyterian Church. Was that a usual and customary thing as colleges began? Absolutely. Cumberland Presbyterian a Church. A Pardon? Yep. Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Okay. But but absolutely. In fact, many of the uh, uh, pre-Civil War college foundings and soon thereafter recent uh, foundings of colleges were mostly religiously uh, uh, began with religious connections. Is that right? Yeah. The state college system really uh, 
didn't happen until after the Morrill Act of 1865. Is that a person or a it was behavior? A, it, was a, <laughs> it was a person. And, uh, it was the beginning of the Not a matter of life. <laughs> agricultural and mechanic colleges across the country. Um, states supported colleges, but it wasn't through an, a, a connection. And uh, anyway, I'm I'm speaking more about my dissertation here than I should. And so oh, that's fine. Your no. audience will fall asleep if I go too deep into history. No, we don't want to do that for them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the governing body, the board of trustees. You might just address the fact that uh, they're not local uh, by any means. They kind of come from very geographic areas. Uh, well, each, I, in fact, I would, fact, both coasts. I would break it up into three groups. So we have some local captains of industry that uh, uh, hospital CEO and CEOs of local companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we have alumni that span uh, the coasts and all around. And we have captains of industry outside of Logan County. And I think it makes a great mix of, of different perspectives uh, on operation of the college. Yeah, you're bringing in people from all around the country, really, uh, who come from uh, <coughs> different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, and a number of trustees were uh, uh, former students. Uh, I think of one who lives up north here who um, he said he was kind of a handful when he arrived here. And Lincoln College just spun him totally around 360 degrees, and he's exceptionally successful and also uh, exceptionally generous because he remembers his roots he absolutely and uh, he's a spectacular gentleman yep. he truly is the we um, the fact that the uh, college is with us here and it's both the Lincoln College and Lincoln University uh, are an important very important economic factor in our communities well uh, Bill one of the things that that I wanted to begin a process of is engagement of our students in the community mm -hmm. so we many mm -hmm. of your listeners will have noted the Lincoln College shuttle that travels around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we have wonderful college marketing on the on the shuttle mm -hmm. but in the future I'll see our students uh, doing internships in the community in fact I found out yesterday <clears throat> one of our students is doing an internship at Integrity Data right now and and uh, very thrilled because it's through those connections mm -hmm. that they will get the work experience that'll give them the foot in the door over their competition to get hired. Uh, but I can see that in the junior and senior levels down the road for those students in our four-year degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Gerlach, uh, you have you know, you've been a busy lady since you hit the ground running. Uh, a lot of responsibilities for the, uh, just not a, a common housewife. Is there such thing as it is to common housewife? I don't imagine. No, I think not that was a bad time. way That's to an put yeah, you myself. You get in trouble there. <laughs> I, I want I've been to in trouble over because I was a little afraid Lisa might hit me <laughs> for <Yeah>. your comment. <laughs> so, uh, do you have a goal in particular that uh, you would like to uh, put yourself toward? I think my goal is just to support Dave. That that's my goal to always be there for him. Um, and also, Dave and I talk about how we see the students as our children. Mm -hmm. We really Very do. Important. We go onto that campus, and I see them. And I'm just so proud to be associated with that university. Boy, you've got college. a big family, Lisa. I, I know. <laughs> you feel very responsible uh, to be an example to them and to be kind to them, that they know that we're there for them, not just him, Dave, as the college president, but for us as a couple that were there for them. So I think that is the two major goals for me. Um, for the community at large in Logan County, I kind of want to be a connector to 
the community and the college, kind of a, another representative of Lincoln College um, as Dave's wife. And um, so those are some things that I, I'm trying to work on. I'm, I'm reading a book right now called uh, The Contrarian, it, it's either The Contrarian Leader or The Contrarian President. And uh, I can't remember the, the title, but the individual is president at USC. He was president at the University of Buffalo prior. And like I said earlier, I have a cabinet and they they get into the weeds and help operate the campus dramatically. They're my counsel and we work together making decisions. But my number one counselor is here sitting next to me. And poor Lisa gets to hear all of the struggles of the day and, and she has some insights that are one step removed from the mud and it's always the most profound guidance that I that I have received over my career be it on my writing of my dissertation or be it on managing the college and and so uh, Bob Neal the head trustee it was funny that he said he really needed to meet Lisa during our interview process and that she cemented this deal uh, because it's invaluable, the counsel and advice and guidance that I get from my better half. So the trustees brought on not only a great president, but a really great first lady, and we appreciate your being here. And again, I want to thank you, uh, Lisa, for the uh, giving us your time today. Uh, Doctor, you have a very busy schedule, and I've asked for a couple of extra minutes, and we've already done that. We're going to have to be very, very careful. We always try to close Viewpoint, uh, folks, with a comment or two that has to do, hopefully, with as germane to the subject matter of the day. And I found out a Henry, I found a Henry Ford comment. That kind of goes across the board, I believe. Old Henry said, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. Mm. So thank you, Dr. David and Lisa Gerlach, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.